Intel first introduced the AVX negative ratio offset on Broadwell E processors. Successive processor generations adopted this feature and eventually expanded it with AVX 512 negative offsets. AVX negative offsets are very useful to achieve the maximum performance for both SSE and AVX workloads. While the function carried over in principle, there are some big differences in implementation of AVX ratio offset between Alder Lake and Rocket Lake. First, on Alder Lake, the AVX2 negative ratio offset is only applied to the P cores. The E core frequency is unaffected. Second, by default, the maximum ratio during an AVX workload is the Turbo Boost 2.0 ratio. If you want an offset of zero, so the AVX workload wouldn't reduce the frequency, you'll need to manually set zero. Note that on some BIOSes, Programming zero means programming default, in which case you'll be limited to maximum 51x for the AVX ratio on the 12900K. Just like on Rocket Lake, the AVX negative offset is referenced against each individual core as Alder Lake supports independent ratios for each P core. Prior to Rocket Lake, the AVX offset would be referenced against the all core maximum ratio. As the AVX offset will be applied to each core separately, you'll have to be a little bit careful when your overclock has different ratios for different cores. Third, Intel has made some changes to how it flags an AVX workload. The effect is that some live AVX workloads will no longer trigger the AVX negative offset. We can demonstrate this new behavior using Y-Cruncher. We ran the Y-Cruncher component stress tester to run a variety of AVX workloads on the 12900K. We configure the 12900K as follows, 5 GHz for the P cores, 3.9 GHz for the E cores, and an AVX offset of 5 ratios. Then we use hardware info to monitor the effective clock during the benchmark. During the Y Cruncher workloads, we see that during the BKT, the P core effective clock frequency is 5 GHz. Since this is a non-AVX workload, it's as expected. Then there are two AVX workloads, BPP and SFT where the P-Core effective clock drops to 4.5 GHz. This is expected as the 5 GHz P-Core frequency is reduced by 500 MHz due to the AVX offset. During the FFT workload, also AVX, the frequency is back to 5 GHz. So the AVX offset was not triggered. Then the next four AVX workloads, N64, HNT, VST, and C17, bounce back and forth the offset and non-offset. In the ASUS BIOS, you can configure the AVX2 negative ratio offset in the Extreme Tweaker AVX Related Controls submenu. First, set the AVX2 ratio offset to per core ratio limit to user specify, then configure the AVX2 ratio offset as desired. In addition to the ability to reduce the CPU frequency with the AVX ratios, an additional feature related to AVX is the ability to enable or disable AVX2 and AVX512 instructions. Disabling AVX causes software to take non-AVX execution paths, resulting in lower performance. So it doesn't mean AVX enabled software won't run, it means just lower performance. As I mentioned earlier in the video, AVX 512 is a bit of a tricky conversation. In certain technical documentation, you could find references to AVX 512 being available on the P cores, but not the E cores. Later, however, the official communication was that AVX 512 would not be available on Alder Lake. However, turns out it is available, though there is a caveat. You need a specific BIOS that supports enabling AVX 512 instructions, and you'll need to disable all E cores. In the ASUS BIOS, you can enable and disable the AVX2 and AVX 512 functions in the Extreme Tweaker AVX Related Controls submenu. If you wish to disable the E cores, in the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can do so in the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Simply set Active Efficiency Cores to 0. 